on the whole, you know, what is the indie community. It's people who grew up, you know, being creative and are trying to find a way to incorporate that into their grown-up lives. We are taken back um, craftiness from our, what we remember, I think, as kids. I think the, the, the movement towards doing things yourself, I think it, even if it is a popular movement that everyone is doing. I think it's great. I'm really happy to see a lot of people just getting their sewing kits out and like making stuff. We all share printmaking facilities and a ballroom space. It's kind of a chameleon room. We're continuously building and improving our facilities so we can continue to make challenging art and uh, radical actions. Amida is a group of people based in Houston and we take our knitted pieces and we take them out to the streets. So we tag things like stop sign poles and trees and anything that we feel like tagging. This sort of pattern that I'm doing right now, this type of bead, can be found in museums. Uh, there can be, uh, you can find examples of this kind of bead in museums that are two or three thousand years old. It's a very traditional craft, you know, crocheting and mosaicing are it's very old, but I like to take a new twist on it, you know, add the cats, add the skulls, so it is not just like the same old stuff that you saw in your grandma's house. It's brand new, it's fresh, and it's, it's like... Cool. When I started Sublime Stitching, I was really worried about the purists coming out and saying, I can't believe you're showing them to do a French knot this way, or, you know, something like that, because I really was taking it from a completely different angle. So many people could relate to it on a personal level, because they used to make hook rugs themselves. The thing that's so sweet about it is that needleworkers say, we're just so glad that people are learning to do it, that the education is continuing. I don't have any like set patterns, so everything's kind of one of a kind. I just kind of go with what I know it should look like, and, and I just cut them out, and I don't have any help right now. <laughs> I would like to eventually have somebody to help like with packing orders maybe like printing out the emails and even cutting. But I'd always like to do all the sewing, like the actual construction of it myself. If you're taking the time to make something, it seems like, it seems natural to want to take the time to really make it well, and like from beginning to end. I grew up going to thrift stores when I was a child. So from early on, I learned how to alter clothing and it's just continued uh, through my whole life. And um, so a lot of the clothes that I make is inspired by that. I've always gone to flea markets since I was a kid and had jewelry and collected jewelry and torn out jewelry and made new jewelry, so it's just kind of a perfect fit and that's what I do full time is tear up old jewelry and remake it into new stuff and scavenge the land for vintage beads. This one is done by um, an artist named Miki Amano. She's a Japanese artist um, trained in, uh, in New York and she's a textile designer so you can actually see a lot of influences of like cross stitching and so on. When you buy them, it comes with the artist bio. We kind of think of it as like a traveling gallery. A craft fair is more than just showing up and buying stuff. It's just like a way to support different communities. It's a way to meet people and it's a way to like support individual artists, but it's more than just a shopping experience. A lot of craft fairs now have DIY tables where you can make your own piece to bring home. And I just think that is such an amazing development. It's nothing I ever would have imagined a couple years ago. People really appreciate it. I think that's why it has become such a big deal because people really appreciate the work that goes into it. With the rise of like the indie craft kind of burgeoning community, 
it seems to be all about context, whereas, like, my books wouldn't sell that great next to, like, you know, batik silk scarves, but if there's, like, a batik silk scarf with a skull on it next to me, I sell much better. It gets easier every year as far as, um, I'm, I'm not asked why my prices are so high and or why there's only a limited amount of things or why I used reused material. You know, it feels like the, it kind of feels like the world has come around to our way of thinking. My first calendar was, you know, I went to Kinko's, copied off a hundred and then just sold those, copied another hundred, sold those. Now, like the calendar, I print 12,000 this year and next year I'm gonna have to print 15, 16,000. Being a shop, we feel like we really can help them out in that way. Support them and encourage them to keep on doing what they're doing. And our goal really is to support all these people, and mostly women, who are able to do this and make a business out of it. We're not specifically people that were crafters that did stuff, but we definitely, we definitely like, could identify that we like that a lot more than the manufactured stuff that we looked at. So it was more just like, it felt like this is a natural fit because we like it. We both made zines, so like from that self-publishing background, like we had an appreciation for kind of DIY stuff. I see a lot of similarity between the arts and crafts community and, and the indie record and music community. And there's a lot of overlap too. We'd make these polar fleece mittens for Kicking Giant, like because everybody had t-shirts for their bands, but who had mittens for their bands? Nobody. And so I just kept making these mittens and ended up making them for K Records. People are loving doing things themselves and learning how to do a craft and actually uh, get the Hello. satisfaction and enjoyment from actually making something themselves. And there are more and more resources for people to learn those types of things as the community grows. If people approach me and they're excited about something that I make, I tell them that they can do it themselves also and I can show them how if they want to learn or they can order a kit in the mail but that just to remind people that they can do anything that everything is possible